Now, like many amateur golfers, I too have aspirations of becoming a scratch golfer. At the moment, I play off of seven, so it's not a terrible handicap, but I know there is work to be done in order to get down to scratch. And one of the things I've decided to do this year is to get golf lessons. And I thought it'd be a good idea to take you along on the journey on my journey to becoming a scratch golfer. Through this particular series, I'll be sharing regular updates on my golf blog and here on this YouTube channel, taking you through my progress to hopefully becoming a much better golfer. Now, instead of going for traditional face-to-face -face golf lessons, I've decided to go for online lessons through the Skillist Golf app. The big benefit for me of online golf lessons is that I can fit them around my busy work and family life, where I can't always get down to the golf course to either practice or for a lesson. With online lessons, I can basically capture my golf swing at a time and place convenient to me. I can then send it to my coach through the Skillless Golf app, and they're able to analyze my swing, send back the analysis through the app, as well as sending some drills for me to work on. Now, in order for me to have a good level of coaching, I've decided to go with PGA professional Michael Farrier Twist, who is based down in England and who I have known through Instagram for quite a while now. I've decided that in this particular series, I'm going to share the videos that Michael has sent to me and I've sent to him so that I can take you along on this journey with me. A lot of the mistakes that I make in my golf swing are similar to mistakes that many amateur golfers make. So hopefully the tips and tricks that I share in these videos will help you too. But as well as working on my golf swing, I'll also share the practice routines and practice practice drills that I take part in down at the golf course as well. Now in this particular video, we're going to start off with my golf swing as it is just now. So I've captured some down the line and head on footage of me just hitting golf balls the way that I've been swinging for a number of years. And I'm going to share those with you in this video, but I'm also going to share Michael's initial assessment of my golf swing. So I've sent those swings across to Michael as well. He has analyzed them and he has sent them back to me with his analysis but he's also included some drills for me to start working on. So let's first of all take a look at my golf swing as it is, and let's take a look at Michael's assessment of that golf swing. Hi mate, so like I said, camera angles are spot on, so that makes my life a lot easier, makes it easy for them to be able to see things in your swing and then we can work on the right bits instead of me having to sort of guess. So first of all, you know, swing in general is very good. There's a lot of things I really like about it. So the down the line one start off with, so set up basically you want your armpits, your knees and the balls of your feet lined up, which you are good and your bum's not sticking out too far. For it. So set up looks spot on. You look like you're standing the right sort of distance away from the ball. So I really like that. Backswing wise again, I like it, looks good, you get a nice big coil and then you get a little bit of an over the top move here so you can see how your shaft wants to work down steeper so if we get your arm, see the club, that's too late, hold on, get you back to your arm sort of parallel, your, your club's on, your shaft's on this plane and then when you come down you can see how it just gets a little bit steeper and it's more over the top. So your hand plane is then working over the top this way, basically. And that just gets you a bit steep, gets you across the ball. So now you're having to swing from the outside of the ball. So you can see here the club head is ever so slightly to the right hand side of the ball versus it's swinging from the inside. That then means your swing path has to move in this direction, which then means if you get the face square, you're going to hit pulls. So your face, you're going to try and open it, keep it over through impact, which is then going to give you some kind of shape to get the ball started and finishing on target. But then if you get that face open or the swing path bit to the right, that's where you get the big slices. But in general, you know, the down the line one is just the over the top. Now, this is where the, the face on swing then becomes really useful. So if we look at your face on swing, again, it's not bad. You've got a nice big turn. There's two big things that, you know, the first things that I'd like us to work on. And the most important thing is strike. Strike is, you know, one thing that every single tour player has in common is they all can strike the ball, whether they hit 30-yard draws or 30-yard fades or whatever. They all strike it pretty consistently, and that's what's going to 
be the biggest thing first is getting your strike good and then worry about the direction once we've got that. Now, the first reason you're struggling with strike, so we can see here is how your hips move. So we can see that your hips are moving this way on your backswing, which then creates this sort of posture here. So you can see you're a little bit curved. So you see you start off pretty straight like that, but then as you get to the top, because you're, let's get rid of these lines to not confuse you. If we look at your head and your hips, so your hips are moving backwards and your head is almost a little bit this way. So your hips are going this way and your head's going towards the target. Now what then is going to have to happen on the downswing is they're going to have to work opposite. And you can see here how your head stays forward, but then you throw the angle of the club to try and catch up. Because basically, when you have this movement, so I'll be able to explain this a lot better. I'll, do a, I'll send a video across that will explain it better. What happens as you do this, so first things first, the club gets a long way back, so that's quite a long backswing for an iron. You don't really want to get into parallel, you want to get sort of short of parallel so we get a bit of control. The reason you can do that so much is because of that hip movement. And then you create this angle here, so you create a rough 90 degree angle, yours is a bit more than that, between your forearm and the shaft. And you can see as you come down here, so now you're at 90 degrees just under 90, and you're throwing this angle. So now you've lost your angle. And then probably just before there's not a frame, but at impact here, you can see how actually your shaft is... Let's see if I can stop it in the right place. Because your shaft is almost behind your hands, at impact it would be. Versus what we want is we want your hands to be in front of the ball. So ideally, when you get to impact, you want your hands to be in a, your um, left arm to be straight down below your shoulder, and that then creates the shaft lean this way. So your hands are wanting to be here at impact versus them being a little bit more forward so you can then compress it. And that's because of this throwing the angle here, which is linked to the hip movement. So as we get your hip movement better, you then won't want to do this so much. That'll then stop you swinging so much across the ball. So this one at the top, you can see how you're wanting to swing across it, like we said. So you're outside the line, you're swinging on this path. And that's the first thing is going to be sorting out that hip movement. That's going to make a big difference with strike. And it's going to feel less powerful at first. It might feel a bit restricted. You'll feel almost like your weight is going to be very much on this side. So you'll feel quite stacked into your lead side as a feeling. But then you should then be able to hold this angle better here. So that's the first thing I'd well, that's where we, we should start, is get that better and then see what effect that has. But like I said, you know, it's a good swing. And this will, this thing, just working on this hip movement should help you with strike quite quickly, getting a more consistent strike. So basically what you're doing by throwing that angle is you're not able to then hit down on the ball, which is why you want your hands, you get your hands in front then your shaft angles this way, and then your low point becomes after the ball, which is why then a good player would take, well, you are a good player, but a tall player would take a divot after the ball, whereas you're probably struggling to take divots because you have that early release and a bit of a flip. Okay, but I'll upload another video to help it make a bit more sense and how you can work on it. So as you can see, it's quite encouraging to hear that there are some good elements to my golf swing, but as expected, there are some things which I need to work on. And as is the case with most changes, it can be really difficult when you're making full on swing changes, especially when you've been doing it the same way for around about 20 years. But I'm really excited to get started with the changes that Michael has recommended I make. The swaying movement away from the ball, then back to the ball has always been something that I've done in my golf swing. And if I've got to be honest, when I film and look back at my swing, I've just never liked the look of it. I'm still able to hit the golf ball, but I know that if I make some changes, like the changes Michael suggested, and really build from the ground up, I'll hopefully have a more consistent golf swing, which will lead to better ball striking. So now that we've looked at the analysis, let's take a look at Michael's suggested drills to hopefully start working on my golf swing. Well, we're basically getting your swing is, is the down the line view, like I said, really good. Setup's really good. I wouldn't change anything there. Back swing looks really nice down the line. You have this slight over the top, so your clubs are moving this way. Then your clubs moving across the ball, and that's why you then either start the ball for you right or you hit them big slices, really. Now, the, the reason you struggle with strike, so 
So what we get with your swing is your hips, let's get rid of the club, is your hips are really sliding this way. So you can see your hips go this way and your head goes slightly this way. Now if I over exaggerate and go like that, to start my downswing, I'm gonna to have to go sliding my hips this way. And then what happens to the club as I do that? So if I go this way and then I slide my hips, you can see how I lose this angle. Now your head doesn't come back, which is, you know, I would have expected for you to go this way, then your head to come back. It doesn't, your head actually stays forward. So this is just you then throwing this angle. And you can see from here, if I've lost my angle here, it's impossible for me to now hit down on the ball. So if I get a ball, it's impossible for me from here to be able to hit down on the ball because I'd have to lose my height to do it. Versus if I'm attacking the ball with wrist cock here, I can now actually start to increase my low points, making my low point more here. So that's why you take a divot and then it starts coming up, not scooping up at the ball. And that then encourages you to then swing off to the left as well for you. So what we need to do is we need to stop this movement here. So this backswing, that's over-exaggerated, you don't do it as much as that, but it's enough for you to create this curve here versus it just being more of a centre turn and this stays more in a straight line. So what you can do is, if you just do this at home, if you grab two chairs and place them on your hips, and basically what we'll be looking for is on the camera, when we draw two lines, is as your hips turn, you basically want to create light between each. So if you had a chair each side, you should be able to turn and not be able to touch then either chair. So you shouldn't be going this way and touching one chair or this way and touching the other chair. You should be able to just turn. It doesn't matter if you're up against this hip here, just to explain it. It doesn't matter too much if this hip stays where it is. It can move a tiny bit back, but we don't want to go in like that, like yours does. So for you as a drill, both get the chairs on your legs and just turn and just feel like you stay more centered. So you still want the weight going into your right foot, but you do that by the pressure, not the weight going this way. It's a pressure as you turn. So it should feel like you should be able to go like that with your foot when you're putting pressure into it, but that's me saying too much really. So yeah, with the chairs, just get used to that feeling of turning this way versus this way. And then what should, then happen in turn is as you turn better and more on top of it you're going to then be able to stay more centered coming down and then trying to hold on to this angle and that'll be the next thing to look at but I don't you know you've got the monthly subscription whatever so i don't want to give you too much information at once give you two different things to work on. you know you only want to be working on one or two things at once and until we get that right then move on to the next bit and, and see what effect it has on it basically so because doing this will have effect on your swing it'd be interesting to see what that happens it should improve the strike so that's the main thing. So give that a go, just stay centered as you turn with your hips. So your hips just coil this way. And then basically the way your hips work on your golf swing is if you had a, um, a stake through the center of your pelvis. So the stake was down here, that would hurt, I know. But what if you then was to track a line with how the middle of your pelvis works, so on your backswing, it stays pretty centered. It might move back a tiny bit, but it stays pretty centered. Then all that happens is it shifts forward a couple of inches, so you get this pressure here, and then you just rotate. And that's how you create your power. And that's why it looks like, when you look at best players in the world, it looks like their bum's going backwards, but actually it's just because they're, as your pelvis turns, if I stayed centered and turn, now my left bum cheek looks further back. So it's literally just trying to coil more around the center of your pelvis, shift forward, and then you have that rotation. But for now, just think about the backswing, and you, know, you can do lots of this at home, staying centered, and then you can hit lots of balls like it as well, just as a feeling. So it might for you feel like you're feeling like you're going this way. It might feel like because to you, you're so used to going in this direction. So give that a go. If you've got any questions, just let me know. Now, as you can see, Michael has suggested some drills for me to work on. And personally, what I think is really important here is that I work on these drills in the house or in the garden and away from the golf course. What I don't want to be doing is just simply going down to the golf course and hitting some golf balls on the range. Because for me, I think I need to grind away at these movements without a golf ball to embed them into play and then hopefully take that 
down to the golf course. As I mentioned a little minute ago, trying to make these changes is not going to be easy, but starting with these dry drills and working through them and repeating them will hopefully lead to some success. So that's the starting point for the next couple of weeks. I'll be working on these drills at home. I'm going to capture that footage and I'll share with you in the next video what I've been working on and the progress that I've made because I'll share those swings back with Michael and we'll see what stage we are at. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video and you've picked up some tips and drills for you to work on as well. If you're interested in seeing how I progress with this particular series, then be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And I'll be sharing these updates on this YouTube channel but also over on my golf blog. Feel free to drop a comment below if you think there are any other drills that I or other people could benefit from if they suffer from similar mistakes in their golf swing and be sure to hit that like button if you haven't already done so. But I look forward to sharing with you my progress in the next video.